Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and it's a pleasure. It's God's blessing, really, to be in this very, very important uh, radio. And I thank God so much that we are together. Mm-hmm. Reverend Edison, Rose, Ronald, Sarah, Aaron, and you who is listening in, I welcome you. Amen. And I greet you in the name of a triune God. Uh, we thank God so much. We take nothing for granted. As you heard me pray before, this is a day that we should ne- not take for granted. We are here by God's grace, and uh, we thank him so much for opening another time, another opportunity that we can come together and worship. Now, before... I move any further, let us pray. Heavenly Father, glorious, mighty, and everlasting, we thank you. We bless you. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you speak to us, that you open our hearts and illumine our minds so we can learn from you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for creating us human, for giving us understanding, for giving us knowledge, and helping us to, and by helping us to conceptualize what you have put before us, you really demonstrate that you are our God, and that you love us so much. And I pray that you speak to our hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. I greet you, and uh, I bring you greetings from Western Kole Diocese. Amen. Uh, Western Kole is now a diocese to thank God for. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Lord has done great, great things beyond our expectations. Uh, recently, my wife and I, by the way, I bring her greetings to you all. Mama Joy and I were celebrating three years uh, since we became Bishop of Western Kole. And we were overwhelmed by the love, by the messages, by congratulatory uh, comments from all over. Mm. And uh, we were very humbled to see what God has done in Western Kole and what he continues to do. Mm. I, so I bring you greetings and love and regards mm. from that diocese. Amen. But also... When I'm here in Akole, I am back home. Mm-hmm. And uh, I thank God for the way he has used our beloved and my brother, uh, Bishop Sheldon and Dr. Alice. Mm-hmm. And uh, among other things, together with the Synod and the Dyson Council and all the Christians, to think of a vision of a radio. Mm-hmm. And by the way, calling it revival. Mm-hmm. I pray, by the way, that... You will not forget that, that uh, what we call the niche, the revival. The revival spirit should always sound and be sounded through this radio. Mm. Uh, I, I pray that whoever comes here and will preach the gospel, will speak of God, will sound, sound theology. Uh, we, we are living in a world where there are so many things that are happening, and we listen in, and I pray that you will continue to sieve out what is not of God so it doesn't go through this air. But mm-hmm. I thank God so much for the ministry through Revival Radio. Mm-hmm. May the Lord continue to revive us every now and again. Mm-hmm. And I pray for the personnel and the team uh, that ministers that you will be used of the Spirit of God mm. every moment. Mm. Do not give Satan any opportunity to air out other things that don't please God. Mm. Now, today is the Trinity Sunday. 
Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. Actually, we are thanking God as the House of Bishops uh, with our beloved uh, Archbishop that uh, though the sanctuaries are closed physically, mm -hmm. the church is alive. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's alive and kicking and healthy. By the way, in some aspects, it is even becoming healthier. Uh, we have people worshipping in their homes and so on. In my own family, I've had an opportunity to come closer to my children every day. For us, we pray every day. And, uh, you know, they take turns in reading the scripture and even preaching. So mm -hmm. I have so many preachers in my home. <laughs> and uh, I think that is happening in most homes mm -hmm. because research shows that in some homes people do not pray, uh, even on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And we encourage you to do that, please. As Christians, please pray. Kick out this darkness. Push it further so you are not, uh, uh, you know, pushed into the ma of the darkness because of the lockdown and coronavirus and all that. By the way, uh, we sympathize and empathize with those families even when they are away. In the United States, in other countries, we see a lot happening and we continue to pray that the Lord would protect us. We thank the president for, uh, for what he has done and what he continues to do to protect the people. This is Trinity Sunday. Now, in my sharing, I'm going to uh, do both uh, teach and preach. And because we need to learn, we need to learn as Christians. The Lord Jesus, when he was giving the Great Commission, he told us as his disciples and said, you go, you go and make disciples of all nations, baptize, but also teach. And so, we'd like to learn something about Trinity. Now, on this particular Sunday, we tend to teach about God. But we walk very carefully when we are talking about God because it is not possible to define God. <laughs> there are people who, when I hear them speak, they speak of God as if they are speaking to their brother, or, you know, and so on. And they, they, take, uh, they take the air to try to explain God. There is, there is no way we can give a thorough, succinct definition of God. In fact, if we were to do that, it would be necessary that we are greater than God. And in the words of Ansem, he said, God is that than which nothing greater can be conceived. There is nothing greater than God. So who are we? How can we even attempt to define God? Mm. Nonetheless, the Bible is not silent about who God is. Of course, yes, we cannot define him. I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that many thinkers and theologians and, and philosophers and uh, lexicographers have not come up with uh, the way they can find God. Those who, the lexicographers are those who compile uh, encyclopedia and dictionaries and uh, almanacs and so on. They really wrestle with the meaning of concepts. Mm -hmm. But God is beyond, he's beyond every, every concept. He is beyond every phenomenon and an occurrence. There is no way we can, we can cushion him mm -hmm. in, in the scope of uh, what is physical. Mm -hmm. And so our minds are so finite that they cannot in any way comprehend the infinity of God. However, as I mentioned, when you study the Bible, you come to realize that God is an infinite, which means endless being mm. with, with infinite perfections. He's a spiritual being with infinite perfections. Perfections. 
And that is where I want to begin from. God is not a force. Of course, he has a power. He has every, but he's not just a force like the electric force. Mm. He's not just power as we know it. God is personal. That is why he can relate with us. Mm. I mean, I cannot, I cannot personally and mutually relate with electricity. <laughs> it has power. It is power, actually. It is fire. Mm. But there is an, it doesn't have that element of, of persona. And so we cannot, you know, rationally and personally and mutually communicate and have fellowship with electricity. Mm. And so, though God is power, mm. he's personal. Mm. Praise be to God. Amen. He knows us. He comes into our situations and ministers to the specifics of our needs. And let me tell you this morning, take heart. Take heart. I know you have so many perplexities. I, there are so many challenges. You have things that 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 actually mount the palpitations of your heart, and at times you don't, you know what, you know, you don't know what to do. Especially this time, there is when I watch television and I see what is happening in America, like this time now, when this. Uh, uh, a racist spirit has come up again in the U.S. after the killing of George Floyd, who was suffocated when that police officer knelt on his neck and suffocated him to death. And now every state in the U.S. has come up. And they are, they are now in the streets demonstrating. And you can imagine... When these demonstrations and when the crowds flood the streets in the U.S. and all over the world, by the way, where black people appear, when that one happens amidst coronavirus, then what do we expect in the aftermath of these demonstrations? We are concerned. But can I tell you, this world has a God. Mm -hmm. The author, the creator, the greater I am, the most immanent, the sovereign, the transcendent God who is in charge, from whom all the power comes and all the blessings come, and in whom we live and have a being. So, God is not a force. He's personal. He knows us. He knows us. He knows you, by the way. When you read Psalm 139, mm. there's nothing in you that he's not aware of. Mm. He knows your past. He knows your present. He knows your future. Mm. You may not know what the future holds, but let me comfort you with these words. There is someone who knows the future, who holds the future, and he knows it. Mm. Do not be perplexed. Do not worry. He knows, and he knows the future. He knows the aftermath of this coronavirus. Mm -hmm. He knows what will happen. He's a God. Now, this God, the Almighty, has attributes, as you, you've, you've heard. He has perfections. And uh, some of you uh, uh, Christians have read the Bible, and you know, you, you know what I'm talking about. God has attributes, communicable attributes and incommunicable attributes. Now I want to explain, explain those terms. Communicable attributes are those perfections or characteristics of God that has a correlation with what we are. In fact, there are things that God is or does, which we also are and do to a limited extent. Mm. That is why we, we, we are his image. Yeah? When we talk of a person as created in the image of God, it doesn't mean that we look like God physically or God looks like us. No, no, no. It refers to his being, which has a reflection mm. in our being. Mm. For example, uh, God has intellectual attributes, the knowledge. Mm. God can know. 
he knows actually. We also are able to know. Mm. We are also able to know. But his knowledge is perfect. In other words, what he knows, he knows it perfectly. But ours is not as perfect. Mm. There is no way, there is no, no one who can know everything. That's why uh, we learn. God does not learn. <laughs> it's the knowledge itself. <laughs> uh, he knows everything perfectly. And uh, when we talk of uh, the omniscience of God, that God is all-knowing. He knows everything, and what he knows, he knows it perfectly. Mm. For us, we know some things, and at times we don't know them perfectly. Mm. So ours is finite. Our knowledge is finite. It is limited, but God's knowledge is all-inclusive and all-encompassing. He knows the past. He knows the future. He knows the present. He knows what can be known. He knows what cannot be known to human beings. He knows us. He knows everything. As I have mentioned already, listen to me. God knows you. In fact, uh, I can see some clergy here, and at times we teach catechism. Mm. <laughs> and, and, and there is when the users ask us, uh, what does God know about you? Mm. And the answer is, he knows everything I think about. Mm. He sees everything I do. Mm. And he, he hears everything I say. Mm. God knows you. Yeah. He knows the secrets of your hearts. Some of you who are planning to do evil, listen to me, he knows it already. Those of you who are planning to do good, God knows. He knows your thoughts. He knows the depth of your knowledge. He knows the scope of your person and character and conduct. He understands you. And, and, and that is one of his key attributes. But also God is wise. We are talking about the wisdom of God. This God we are talking about is wise. And, uh, you know, we also can be wise. And that is why Solomon asked for wisdom. When he asked God, uh, give me the, 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 the understanding so I can distinguish the right from the wrong, Solomon was implying a definition of true wisdom. Mm. A wise person is that one who has ability to distinguish between what is right and what is wrong. What can lead his life to goodness and what can lead his life to danger and jeopardy. I want to tell you, ask for wisdom. Ask for wisdom so the Spirit of God can help you to distinguish between what is right and what is wrong. You know, there are some times when I'm, I'm driving over the streets and, you know, walking here and there, and I see, even today, some people are still smoking. You see <laughs> a very good-looking gentleman smoking. Even when knowledge is available that smoke, or cigarettes have nicotine that causes lung, that cause lung cancer, but you see someone, despite that knowledge, even when he's a professor, <laughs> he's a professor of biochemistry in a university, he teaches that, but he smokes. Eh? Now, how, how, and why should we neglect what is available to help us understand? that we should distinguish between truth, uh, what is right and what is wrong, what is proper and what is improper. Young men and women who are listening in, I know some of you are in your homes, I want to challenge you, do not walk foolishly in this world. Paul said in Ephesians 5 and verse 15, he said, uh, uh, you, you, you need to walk wisely. The old English uses the word circumspectly, which means that when you make a step, you should 
look around carefully and see if it is safe to take another step. Young people, would you walk wisely? Would you walk carefully? Would you walk circumspectly? Would you ask the Lord to help you understand that this world is deadly and dangerous? It needs someone who has that spirit that can distinguish between the right and wrong. And you know what? God can give you that light. God can give, because he is wisdom, and he will help you to understand. That is why James says, if you lack wisdom, ask, ask the Lord will give you that wisdom. God is wise. But let me also mention that the third characteristic of God is his faithfulness. God is faithful, faithful. He can keep his promises. God will keep his promises. He's a faithful God, very faithful. And by the way, his faithfulness can also be uh, interwoven with uh, his righteousness, which also speaks about his justice, that God is faithful and just. I want to mention to you that one day, God will reward the faithful. He will reward you. In fact, even those who have planned this radio, <laughs> God will reward you one day. Because you thought about how people can get his word, and you didn't put the radio uh, for fun and pleasure and all that, which is not necessarily wrong, uh, provided it is a godly fun. Mm. But God will reward the efforts of the faithful. Those of you in your homes and families, if you are loving, you take care of your children, you take care of your wife, you, you respect your husband, you, you do what you are supposed to do as an, a human being, God will reward you. He will. He's faithful. He is faithful, and yes, he will keep his promises. And, uh, you know, in, in theology, I remember I taught Sarah in my class, and I'm glad to see that she's here <laughs> leading the litany. Mm -hmm. uh, what a blessing. Mm -hmm. I used to tell them that uh, God's justice has two elements. There is what we call remunerative justice. That is the kind of justice by which God rewards the faithful. But there is also retributive justice. That's the kind of justice by which God punishes sin. Those who are listening in, please take note of this. God is just. And because he's just, he cannot not punish sin. And he cannot not reward the faithful. Mm. Those who are doing what pleases him, he will reward you. And some of you already are beneficiaries of his rewards. He will reward you. Mm -hmm. I know I have been uh, thinking about when I met, I saw Rose in this studio, mm -hmm. I have recalled and recollected the many times we sat together in the Radio West and all that, and, and we shared the gospel. I have never, never seen Rose share anything else on air, uh, <laughs> but the word of God. Amen. The Lord we reward you. He already is doing that. So those of you who are listening in, remember that. You do good, God will reward you. Do evil, unless you repent, God will justly give you what befits your actions. Also today, we remember that God uh, is good. That's very central uh, when it comes to his attributes. God is good. And some of you have uh, have made that statement 
which is now a slogan, uh, kind of a greeting. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. God is good. Mm. He is good. Now, his goodness is seen in different areas, but one of them is that he provides for our needs. God is good. Mm-hmm. He takes care of us. He cares. You know, <laughs> think about this. We are in a lockdown. But you know what? God is providing for us. And even when you see the government uh, giving posho and beans and all that, you know, sometimes when you are myopic, when you are looking at things from, you know, <laughs> from a very short uh, distance, so you, are, you don't think quickly through them, you think this is just the government of Uganda doing that. Mm-hmm. But are you aware that this is God? It is God who is using the president and all the, 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 the team, the entire team to do this. He knows his people. After all, where do they get this portion from? From maize. <clears throat> who created maize? It is God. <clears throat> who created the beans? It is God. He takes care of us. Would you remember that? God is good. He provides for your needs. He cares for you. He forgives your sins. Eh? Who among us, even those who are listening in, who has never been forgiven? If God were to take you by your sin every time and punish you as it is, it, it, you know, that as it would require, None of us would be here, but God forgives us. He's merciful. He's gracious. He does not take us as, as our sins deserve. He is gracious and merciful. Of course, we should not abuse, abuse his, uh, his mercy. Uh, that is when God is merciful, and then you say, well, he's merciful. Then you keep in sin, which is why Paul says we shall not keep in sin so the mercy can abound. We should remember that he's merciful, yes, he's gracious, but, but he's also patient. So those who are living in sin can reconsider and turn away from sin. That is why even when you are living in sin, you are still kicking and, and breathing. It's not because God condones sin. It's because <coughs> excuse me, he's waiting to, to see you come to a realization of how sinful you are, and then you turn to Christ for forgiveness. God is merciful. God is gracious. God is, is long-suffering or is patient. Now, I cannot use this particular time uh, to exhaust the attributes of God. Of course, we have the incommunicable attributes, those that we cannot share with God. For example, God is self-existent, which means that he has the ground of existence in himself. He does not need any outside force of him in order for him to exist. He does not derive his existence from anybody else. For us, by the way, uh, Reverend Edison, when I look at you, I know you, you, you derived your existence directly from your parents. Yeah, you inherited that body from your parents. It was, of course, in accordance with God's divine design. Without your parents, you could not be. And without God... You and your parents could not exist, and their parents and the parents of their parents. But you know, God does not need any other being outside of him Mm. to exist. Mm. And that is why we cannot say that God began to be. No, 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 he did not begin. God exists from eternity throughout eternity. There is no way we can think of before God. It doesn't make sense. There is nothing like before God. Because God did not begin. Instead, he is the beginning. And God cannot end. Instead, he is the end. That's why we talk of Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning. So everything that begins, begins in him. 
He is the end and everything that ends, ends in him. Mm. But he himself cannot begin, cannot end. Mm. That's what makes him different from other beings. There is nothing else that doesn't begin. And when it begins, it ends. <laughs> but it is only that which does not begin that will not end. Mm. God, if, if you will, is a, a cause of himself. Mm. In the words of Plato, God is the unmoved mover, the uncaused cause. <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? He's God. He's above. <laughs> and that is what defines his sovereignty. Mm. His transcendency, that is above everything else that exists, because everything exists because of a, another cause which precedes its existence. Mm. You know, I was thinking about this. <laughs> I, I am here because I have a father. My father had a father. <laughs> His father had a father. <laughs> when you continue that line, you will come necessarily to the first father. Mm. And if he's the first father, he was not fathered. So the question is, where did the first father come from? And, and, and uh, so if he's not the first, then you continue the line. So if, if the first father was not fathered, where did he come from? It is the Bible which gives us the answer. He was made. He was created. Mm. He didn't create himself. You know, he was created. Mm. He was made by something that pre-existed. Mm. And that, that something is God. Yeah. Amen. So God made everything else, uh, but, but nothing uh, made himself. And, and, and that's very, very critical. Uh, we, can I mention, uh, before I share something about the Trinity, that God is not only... A sovereign and eternal and, and, and everlasting, but he is also holy. Mm. Holy. Mm. Uh, I wish we all understood this particular aspect of his being. God is holy. And in most cases, when the Bible is talking about God's holiness, it does not mention it in singularity, but in plurality. That is why even the angels, when they are worshiping God, and as we read in Revelation, the cherubim and the seraphim, we sang it here, mm. in the hymn, Holy, Holy. Mm. When they are singing and flapping their wings before him, they say, Holy, Holy, Holy. God is not only holy, <laughs> but he's holy mm. in pl plurality. And you know, uh, when things are three, actually, they talk about the completeness. Mm -hmm. God is holy, holy, and holy. That's why when Moses was charging the Israelites, he told them, be holy because the Lord your God is holy. Can I tell us, we can do everything. We can sing for the Lord. So many hallelujahs and amens and praise the Lord and so on. We can speak in tongues. We can do all the miracles. But if you at the end are not holy, you mm. cannot see God. Mm. And you know why? Uh, is it possible for us to be holy on our own? The answer is a flat no. Mm. Mm. That's why. The coming of Jesus Christ, the incarnate of God, mm. is very critical. Jesus the Emmanuel. That is why, as Christians, we should always be, be, be excited and thank God that we are not only theistic. In other words, we, are, we don't only believe God, mm. but we also are children of God through Christ. We shall only come to heaven because... We have accepted Christ to cleanse us so that his holiness can be our holiness. And that is how we can attain the true holiness of God in Christ, not in, every, in anything else. He's holy. Now, when, when we talk about this God, of course, his being is inexhaustible. You know? uh, there, there's no way we, we can fully fathom the being of God as I, I began speaking. 
But God exists in three. That's why today is very important. Trinity. There are people who believe in God, but they don't believe that he's Trinity. He's in a Trinity. He exists in three. Mm. Like, of course, some who believe in God, but they don't believe in Jesus Christ. So it is not enough to be theistic. We better be Christian. Mm. Now, what does the word Trinity mean? It, it means the unity of God. That word Trinity comes from the, the, the of course, the, the uh, mother languages like Hebrew and Greek, but to, to transliterate it, I can say it comes from two words, try, which is three, mm. and unity, mm. which is oneness. Mm. So Trinity is not a biblical word. It does not come from the Bible. It was put together to explain a concept which is biblical. Mm. And I know uh, that uh, Tertullian wrestled with this very clearly and mm. explained the meaning of this. And, and uh, so the, the concept is in the Bible that God is three in one. Mm. In using this particular word, Trinity, the first minds that uh, put it together, like I've mentioned, uh, Tertullian, he wanted to express the fact that God, the Almighty, the, the Godhead, uh, the Godhead, exists in three persons. Mm. But these three persons are not distinct beings. Mm. But they are three aspects of the same essence. And that is to say that the Godhead is three in one and one in three. Mm. Now, of course, it, it might be a little tricky to understand this concept because um, there is when we express it in Yankore or But I want to tell you. Trinity is not an irrational concept. Mm -hmm. It's only that our minds may struggle to grasp mm -hmm. the scope and understand it, but it is rational. Mm -hmm. Now, it, it says that, let me explain it this way very quickly, that God is one, but his oneness is expressed in three persona and and so the father the son and the holy spirit mm -hmm. now the father is god the son is god mm -hmm. the holy spirit is god mm -hmm. but the father is not the son the <laughs> son is not the holy spirit the holy spirit is not the father mm -hmm. so they they are three but their threeness mm -hmm. should not be interfused Mm. Let me repeat that. The Father is God. Mm. The Son is God. The and Holy the Spirit, Spirit is God. Is God. But mm. neither of the three is the other. So, they are one in essence, but they are not one in a person. Mm. Now, you know, there are people who say, well, uh, are you sure this concept is biblical, <laughs> and I can tell you, it is. Now, I cannot run you through all the texts and scriptural um, evidence of this particular concept, but, but let me mention some. And I would like uh, um, my brother, Reverend uh, Edison, read, read Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Now, this is where God was to create, mm -hmm. and, and he mentioned, to create a man uh, or human being, and he mentioned this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is what it said. It says, then God said, let us make man kind in our image. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. In our likeness, 
so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals. Okay. Thank you so much. Mm. Go back to verse 26 at the beginning. Then God said. God said. Now, we are talking about the Godhead. The Almighty said. Uh -huh. Let us make mankind in our image. Now, listen carefully. Thank you so much. Mm. Let us make man mm. in our. Now, note those words. Us. Mm. And our, mm. when you are the only one, can you say us? Mm. <laughs> can, you, can you say, let us? Us implies plurality, mm. and it has to go beyond one. Mm. So with whom was God when he said, let us make man in our own image? Now, you, you, you go to, to the same book, chapter 11, and uh, this is where uh, uh, we, 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 we read uh, something about the Tower of Babel. When man had been inflated with pride and he said, we want to build a tower that we reach heaven. Uh -huh. And now read verse 7. When, when, when they, had, they had built and built and they were continuing to build, let us hear what, what happened. Uh, verse 7. Come. You, you, can, you can read from verse 5 to get the context. Yeah, from verse 5. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building, the Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language <laughs> so they will not understand each other. Now, did you hear that? Let us... Mm. Go down. Mm. That's us. Yeah. So now we see that God is not just one. Mm. Now when we read Luke chapter 1 verse 35, uh, we read these words. This is when the angel came to announce that Jesus Christ would be born. And the angel answered, Luke 135, the Holy Spirit will come on you. Of course, when he announced that Mary would give uh, birth to a child, and Mary was perplexed, and she said, how? But here the angel, the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you. Now, the Holy Spirit, mm. that is the first person, and the power of the Most High. Now, that implies God the Father will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born, and of course, that is Jesus Christ, will be called the Son of God. Mm -hmm. So already, in the announcement of the birth of Jesus Christ, we see Trinity. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, we read, The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Jesus was giving the Great Commission in Matthew 28, 19, he said, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Mm. We see Trinity there. Mm. In Matthew 3, verse 16 and 17, at the baptism of Jesus Christ, we see uh, it is mentioned, as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. And at that moment, heaven was opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. Mm -hmm. And a voice 
from heaven said, this is my son whom I love, mm. with whom I am well pleased. Now, here we see that the Holy Spirit is coming as a dove, mm. the voice oh. from heaven, mm. and then the sign is in the water. Mm. I cannot not mention uh, what we just read here, that in John 1, we read that in the beginning was the Word. Mm. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. God. Mm. You remember that statement, the doxology in, uh, in 2 Corinthians 13, 14. Mm. In fact, uh, sometimes when we say, we are saying the grace. Mm. Many times we, we may not remember where it comes from, but it comes from 2 Corinthians 13, 14. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ mm. and the love of God and the fellowship of, of the, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Mm. When Peter was writing his letters, he, he also spoke, I write to you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may know God, the, the, the mighty one, in the grace of his son, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. you can, I can go on and on. Of course, now I'm on air, but some of you who want to know more about that, you, you should go to your churches and, and, and you get to know many scriptures that talk about the Trinity. Mm -hmm. In John, uh, the gospel, chapter 10, verse 30, Jesus said, I and my father are one. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you, the spirit of God should help us to understand that Trinity mm -hmm. is a biblical concept. God is three mm -hmm. and three in one. In one. Mm -hmm. Now, let me conclude by by showing us that Jesus Christ did not therefore begin to be when he was born mm. of course Isaiah had had announced his birth in Isaiah chapter 9 when you are reading verse 6 we read that in most cases when we are in Christmas mm. it says a child is born mm. the son is given and his, the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, mm. the Prince of Peace. Mm. He did not begin to exist when he was born. He mm. was from eternity mm. in heaven. Mm. And according to Hebrews 10, we read that there was a meeting in heaven when Jesus said, let me go down mm. and do what man cannot do. Mm. And a body was prepared for him in Mary. But why did Jesus come to this world? Mm. My beloved, those who are listening in and those who are in the studio, uh, by the way, I'm so uh, uh, excited to see that you are serving God. Uh, I remember many times when the Lord called me uh, when I got saved in 1986, mm. I was in, in a secondary school in senior four, and the Lord saved me. He He has been so wonderful to me. Very, very. I cannot express myself. I cannot fully, fully express how grateful I am that I know God. Mm. I know Jesus Christ as my Savior. Mm. Not because I'm bishop. Not because I was Reverend Cannon, I was a lay reader, I was, a, you know. No, no, no. I am so excited because I know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And personal Lord and Savior. Mm. There is no way I can mince words on that. I cannot use uh, any, any circumlocution when I'm talking about him being my Savior. Mm. And by the way, many times I have encouraged Christians to not just be Christians, but receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. Mm. Some of you, you saw, yeah, well, I was, I was baptized, I was confirmed, I go to church every, those are good, and that's very good. That's the faith and order stuff. But I want to mention that Jesus Christ came as the person of the triune God, and he ascended 
Uh, he descended on earth and became God that is in man in order to unite us to the Father, to reconcile us with God. Mm -hmm. Can I say boldly, Jesus came to save man. Mm -hmm. To save man. Mm -hmm. He came to save you. Listen to me. You. Singular. Not you as a family. Of course, some of you may be saved. And you find that most of the family members or all are saved, which is as a great blessing. Mm -hmm. He came to save you from your sin. You. 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 In my language, iwe. Iwe wenyini. You. Please listen. You are to be saved from sin. Jesus died on the cross. He bled profusely. He cried to his father, Father, why have you forsaken me? When the entire world's sin was put on his shoulders. Why did he suffer? He suffered that you get saved. In fact, read this verse and I, I, I really uh, wind up from John chapter 3. Some of you are very familiar with verse 16, but we shall read 16 and 17. The latter uh, is some verse that most of us are not familiar with. But you read us John 3, 16 and 17. I pray that in whatever we are doing, yes, go, go ahead and minister. Go ahead and do God's work. Go ahead, go ahead. Do everything, Christian. You, you get involved in service and benevolence and every other activity that is Christian. That is excellent. But listen to me. Do not forget why Jesus came. Mm. Read. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Mm -hmm. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. Yes, he did not send his son into the world to judge it. But and, to and, 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 and God is not, is not ready to, to, to condemn you. It's mm -hmm. not about condemnation. You mm -hmm. could be a drunkard. You could be a, a humanizer or a detruther. Or you, you, sometimes you feel like you have hit the dead end. You have lost all hope. But let me tell you, there is grace, there is love. There is, some, there is a love that is ready to embrace you. Mm -hmm. Jesus did not come to condemn. Uh-huh but to save the world through him. Praise be to God. Amen. To save the world through him. He came that you may have life and have it abundantly. Mm. He came that sin may not push you into, into hell and you end up to, to, to get into torment forever and ever and ever. Sin should not push you into oblivion. Do not allow that drinking to kill you. Do not allow, even if you are already, already, you know, uh, there, there are people who, who say, you know, Bishop, I messed up myself. And right now, um, I'm HIV positive. I have lost my family. I have messed up myself. I don't know what to do. Can I tell you, beloved? Yes, you might have done all that. Mm -hmm. But the Lord Jesus will save your soul. He will save your soul. Of course, we shall lose this body, whether it is to HIV, AIDS, or to whatever, whatever. But the soul, which is the most important, will be saved. And when you are saved and cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ, you have life eternal. You will live with him forever. You become God's child through Christ. Please, this is what revival is all about. I want to mention this. Jesus came to save. Turn to him and accept him as your Lord and Savior. One day, you will see the goodness of the of the of the Lord. Mm. 
even here there are people who get saved and their lives turn completely mm -hmm. they begin to see newness you you live eternity from here you you begin to live in eternity from here so may the lord bless you may he remind you that he came to save you from sin and make you whole. God bless you. Thank you very much. May the Lord continue to bless this radio and bless all of you Christians near and far. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Can I pray a blessing? Holy Father, Sometimes we run short of words. There's no way we can fully mm. express our heart. Mm. But we know what we are talking about. Mm. Those of us who are saved by the grace of God, it's not, we shall not be in heaven because we never sinned. Mm. We shall be in heaven because we chose to to be forgiven and to, to surrender our lives to Christ. Mm -hmm. And those who are in hell are not in hell because they sinned. They are in hell because they refused to accept Christ. Mm -hmm. I pray, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you would melt our hearts mm -hmm. and speak to our souls mm -hmm. that we surrender our lives. Yes. Thank you, God. Mm -hmm. And I pray that the peace of God which transcends all understanding will keep your heart as you think about the goodness of God mm. who sent his son Jesus Christ mm. to save you. Mm. May he save you even now. Mm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Kute. Then there is a yes, yes, or a mana guandiga, yes, or mosa, um, say, gonna seize a devasa, oh, muloco, see.